everybody, welcome. Uh, I want to talk to you about doing laser cutter projects using Rhino to design. Now, here's an example of some acrylic that was cut using a laser cutter. In fact, here is one laser cutter. We have a, a fancier one than the one you see on this picture. But, you know, you may find um, that uh, the thing about a laser cutter is that it can cut, it can etch lines, and it can even do a thing called hatch. So let me show you some examples so you can see some of the things you can do. Now, there's all kinds of materials you can cut with a laser cutter. So you can do little keychain kind of charms there, for example. Um, and so now if you really want to get fancy, you could actually create multiple laser cutter projects and then put them together. So to create a table, they had to create uh, three different cuts. The interesting thing about it is we go back to this image here that we were looking at. You just get a big sheet of acrylic and um, you place it, you design it on the computer. And for an example of this, where you see that table, that was all cut on one acrylic sheet. They were, pieces were popped out and then put together. And if you do it right, you can actually get them to fit together. So there's all kinds of examples here. I want to show you some other, uh, when you get really good at laser cutter, you can make 3D objects with your laser cutter projects, like this car here. Um, and this, uh, what is that, a pagoda or something like that? I don't know. Anyway, so there's all kinds of different designs and shapes that you can do using a laser cutter and different materials as well. So in our class, we're using Rhino to create our object. Okay, while my Rhino is opening, uh, I just want to show, if you look at these two boxes on the left, um, you see basically everything was just cut out. We, they cut out the shape of the sides of the box and holes on the box. But if you look on the left, you can see a process called hatch that they used. You see how it's kind of fuzzy there? It looks like they used fractals or something. And they kind of filled it out. And that's an example of hatch. Now let me show you an extreme example of, of hatch here, uh, where you can actually take photographs and you can etch them in. And so where it's solid color is a type of hatching that's going on. And in some cases, you could do just etch lines. So really what we want to do is we want to see examples of cuts, etches, and hatching. So just so you, as a reminder here, for example, I think this one here, see where it says piece on there, that was hatched. You see the little windows, those are just lines, that's done with an etch. And then the outer shape and the windows here were cut out using a cut line. So there's really three main techniques that you want to use in Rhino when you do this. There is etching, there is hatching, and there is cutting. So I'm going to use small objects inches. My students all need to use small objects inches. We're just going to pick a consistent measuring. And we're going to go ahead and in Rhino, I need to resize this a little bit to fit in the recording, the video recording window. And when we do Rhino, what we want to do is we want to um, make sure that we just go into top view. Rhino is, of course, a tool that can create 3D designs, but laser cutter is all done on one plane, so it's 2D. So I double click on top to get the top view, and I'm going to right click and bring my little XY uh, grid lines at 0x and 0y. Uh, um, on this window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a background bitmap. Now, you can go online and look for pictures that you use as a reference point. I want to do a picture of Luigi. And so when I do my background bitmap, there's two ways to do it. You can click, right click on top, go to back, background bitmap place, or you can just type out background bitmap, or the letter B shows that background bitmap is your first option. If it's highlighted, I just hit enter. There we go. First thing you want to do is you're going to want to place it. And so I got to find my picture here. And uh, where did Luigi go? There he is, 640 Luigi. Now I picked, I grabbed my picture, and in the case of your object, you should decide how wide and how tall it's going to be. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in our class, we're making them three by two or two by three. 
So I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to drag my picture until... Now, here, this is more like 3 by 2 But if I click here, you will see that there's a lot of margin around Luigi. So he's a little bit too small. I can make him larger to get to fit within my size requirements. So one of the things I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to hit Enter and be done with the background bitmap. And I'm going to create a little box as a reference point. Now, he looks like he's a little bit taller than he is wide, so I'm going to make it 2 inches wide by 3 inches high. So I'm going to draw a little rectangle as a reference point. First corner, I'm going to put it in the zero corner, and then I'm going to make it uh, 2 inches wide by 3 inches tall. So Luigi has to fit roughly within that box. So now I need to move my picture or my grid or my box here. I'm going to move the picture. So I'm going to type out B for background bitmap. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to click on move. And now I can actually move Luigi to fit in the box. And he's pretty close. I'm going to move him just a little bit further. And by the way, I want his foot to be at the bottom. So I'm just going to click here and drag it so it's at the bottom. Click again. I can move them just a little bit more. I forgot that there was a bit of a gap there. All right, now I want to make him a little bit larger so that his head is about the height of the box. His hand will go beyond the box. That's okay. I just want to make sure he's roughly the size of two by three. And so I'm going to click at the bottom here. Notice one click is the first part. I want to click about here and drag him up. So his head's a little closer. His hand's poking out, but I'm roughly within two by three. So of course, it's up to you what size you want to do. If you're a student of mine, we need to keep it to three by two, two by three. Or I am allowing students to sort of break beyond the box if it's an irregular shape like Luigi. I'm going to use my uh, mouse tool, the roller, to zoom in. Right click allows me to move him. And here's Luigi. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to cut out the shape of Luigi. I already know this is big enough, so I'm just going to delete that rectangle. And so the outer shape of Luigi is going to be my cut line. And then I'm going to draw the little details of like the soles of his shoes, the buttons, the suspenders, and the hand. All of these are going to be done using etch lines. And then I'm going to hatch his mustache to really pop the mustache out a little bit so it stands out. I think I'll do the mustache, eyebrows, and pupils of his eyes. Everything else is going to be done using an etch line. And then I'm going to make this a keychain holder. So I'm going to put a little hole roughly where his hand is. So I like to go step by step. I want to decide, for example, to do my cut lines first, get that salt. So you're going to want the layer editing tool. And the layer editing tool, here it is. Now, if you don't have it, it's this little thing that looks like a slice of cheesecake. A very patriotic slice of cheesecake. Unless, of course, you're from another country with different colors on your flags. Okay. Anyway, so we could call this the, uh, whoa. We could call it the American cheesecake, the French cheesecake. This could also be the Costa Rican cheesecake or any other country that uses red, white, and blue on their flag. Very patriotic, right? So what I want to do is I want to get the color red to cut. So our laser cutter is set up to use these layers like this. I check the little box. It's just to the left of the eyeball under layer one. And now any line I draw will be red, and that will be cut on our laser cutter. So I'm going to get the control point curve because he is pretty much has only curved lines going around. You may have one that has all straight lines, in which case I would use the polyline curve. And some of you may have both straight and curved lines, and you're going to want to go back and forth. If that is the case, before you begin, I highly recommend you have this little thing called O-Snap checked. See it says O-Snap? We use O-Snap, make sure end is checked here, and watch what we can do. For example, I can start with a straight line. I click a straight line here. Now, I've put two points in. Two points make a line. I can hit enter, and now that red line is right there. 
Now, I'm not going to use a straight line, but I just want to show you how you do it. And if you want to connect a curved line to the straight line, then use the control point curve, which is over here. And as long as end is checked on O snap, you'll see it sort of snaps right to the end. And what's nice about this is it allows you to connect different lines. And then I hit enter when I'm done. And now you'll see I have a line here. I have a line here. If I select both lines, I can join them together using the join tool. And now those have been closed into one open curve is what they call it. Okay. So be, be, be warned if you're going to do it in multiple stages, but you need them connected, you want to make sure you use o, uh, object snap end. Okay, I deleted that layer, and I'm going to just show you just a little thing here, um, just kind of about working with lines on here. Remember, layer one is red, and red cuts. If it helps, just think about a cut bleeds red, right? And notice how I go around control point curves. You kind of gently go around, place them at key locations. Now, you see how this curve kind of goes out? If I try to go out here, it's not going to be as abrupt. Sometimes you have to put two little points there, and then you proceed. And then use your right. I like to zoom in really tight. And then I use, for example, the right mouse button to move it around. And then I, I also have an ear where it pops out. So I click here. And you see how you got two little points close together? It allows me to then have it change directions in a more dramatic fashion. So there's kind of an art form to this. And part of this, you just got to learn the right amount of clicks per curve. If you want a really gentle curve, you can do further out, right? You want them close together, put them close together. All right, now I could go in this forever and you can watch me type this all out. So um, instead, what I'm going to do is finish drawing out this curve and then talk about the other kinds of lines that we mentioned before. Okay, here is Luigi all completed here. And one of the things you'll note is if I hide, if I hide for example, layer one by clicking the light bulb, we can see all those red lines are gone. If I check over here and I hide the blue, that goes away. Now, so I've basically traced around Luigi's eyebrows. I also made a little circle here for a keychain. One thing you will note, I took a measurement of a hole for an actual keychain, and it was about an eighth of an inch diameter. And so notice it's half of the size of one of these squares here. Okay, so um, just keep that in mind. This is actually about the size you want, or even a little bit smaller if it's going to be a key ring, uh, possibly larger depending on what you're connecting to it.